summer flowers dying off, it can be a bit tempting to wind down a bit yourself, but autumn is not a time to rest in your garden. It's time to get in and explore and to learn about the processes of change through the seasons. It's a perfect time to plant new things, rearrange, get pruning, and generally prepare your plants to get through the cooler months ahead. This is one of my favourite salvias. It's called Celestial Blue and it's been powering through since mid to late spring. At this time of year though, the old flower spikes look rather unsightly, so I like to remove them, pruning just above some new growth. If I'm lucky, pruning now will even stimulate an autumn flush of flowers. Autumn's a great time for pruning plants that flowered over spring and summer, as it won't interrupt the flowering and fruiting cycle. In fact, it will encourage healthy new growth and keep them nice and compact, particularly when it comes to hedges or bushy perennials. This is Salvia murii. It's amazing because it never stops flowering and it's got flowers on it for the whole 12 months of the year. But that's the challenge because you never know when to prune it. I find pruning it in autumn means that it can grow back with our autumn rains. Use pruning as an opportunity to really get in there and see what's happening and be a plant detective. Are there any signs of pests, diseases or deficiencies that need attention? Is it showing signs of weather damage? Are there any dead or broken branches? Don't forget with all this plant matter, it's fantastic to add to your compost. Whether you're planting now or not, adding some compost to the surface of your soil is a lazy way of doing some good over the cooler months. If you've got well broken down, ready to use compost, spread a thin layer across beds or gaps and gently tickle it in. This will keep the soil healthy and full of living organisms until you're ready to plant, so there's less work to do later. Compost is a wonderful source of organic matter which improves the water holding capacity of my soil and helps turn it into a sponge. I'm not going to dig it through because the worms are going to do it for me. Autumn is the perfect time for planting new plants or transplanting existing ones while the weather is mild. In our hot summer dry climate, it gives plants six to nine months to get established before the next lot of hot weather arrives. They may not grow much, especially if you get frosty winters, but by the time spring comes, they'll have already done the work to be ready for a growth spurt. It takes some planning ahead, but you'll have more success than waiting to get plants from the nursery in spring when they're already in full bloom. When we started this garden, it was all baking full sun, but over time, the trees have grown to create shade, so now I need to choose plants that are shade tolerant and root competition tolerant. So I've put in a Ruscus or Butcher's Broom. I've put in Sarcococca or Sweet Box, and I'm going to have a go at Plectranthus eclonii, the white form, even though it's frost tender. If the weather's still fluctuating in your area, make sure to wait for a cooler day to plant so they don't go into shock. Even with cooler weather on the way, you still need to keep the water up to give them a good start in life, making them more resilient to stress and pests. So that's the flowers and beds taken care of, but don't forget the veggie patch. There are plenty of things to plant now. In most areas of Australia, you can plant out brassicas, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, peas, beans, spinach and silverbeet to have lots of delicious green veggies for winter meals, along with onion and garlic for flavour. Like all veggies, broccoli loves to grow in spectacular soil, so I've already improved it with compost. I like to space my plants about 40 centimetres apart and I grow different varieties, making sure that I always plant some sprouting varieties, particularly at the start of the season, because they're the ones that are going to crop soonest. The bed needs exclusion netting put on straight away to avoid the cabbage white butterfly taking over, and it's larvae eating your crop even before it's had a chance to grow. The net can be removed once the cold is set in as they'll be less prevalent. If you don't net them, check the leaves daily and remove the tiny green caterpillars. That might all sound like a lot of work, but trust me, if you put in the hard yards now, you'll be rewarded with a healthy, beautiful garden over winter that will spring back to life as soon as the weather starts to warm up.